Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us for Grit, Grace, and Glimmer. In today's presentation, we will share potentially uh, helpful ways that you can get through this unprecedented holiday season with a little bit of grace and a lot of grit. My name is Tracy Sinellis, and I'll be one of the presenters here today. I have a BA in communication from the University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire. I spent the first part of my career in nonprofit development, and I have since become a certified senior advisor, and I've worked in senior care for a little over 15 years now. It's my pleasure to work with seniors and their families as they navigate all the different types of health care, social needs, and financial issues that face seniors. On a personal note, I lost my dad to cancer about 12 years ago. Unfortunately, he died the day before he was supposed to start hospice. And because of that, my family was not able to really benefit from bereavement services. So since then, I've really made it my personal mission to educate as many families as I can about the benefits of not waiting to start hospice. Um, back in 2007, when Sharon S. Richardson Community Hospice um, first started, I was privileged to be on their professional advisory board. And now I'm thrilled that I'm a referral specialist for them. On a personal note, um, my husband and I have three um, young adults. Our oldest is a senior at La Crosse, and he's actually recovered from COVID. And we have twin daughters that are freshmen at Stout. And we were, um, in all honesty, we were really looking forward to be empty nesters. And then in about mid-October, our daughters were exposed and needed to come home for a few weeks. Um, they went back to school. And then a couple of days before they were supposed to come home for Thanksgiving, um, they were told um, that they, the school would highly recommend that they stay home for the remainder of the semester. So we will be blessed with their presence uh, through the end of January. And my um, glimmer of hope is that these new vaccines um, will really make a difference so that next year, all of us will be able to spend the holidays with our loved ones and get back to some sort of normalcy. Thanks, Tracy. I'm Elizabeth and I'm a licensed clinical social worker and I previously served as a psychotherapist for the Holistic Health Center in Sheboygan, as well as a college instructor at UW-Green Bay Manitowoc campus, the former Silver Lake College and um, Marquette University. I am part of the spiritual care and bereavement programs at Sharon S. Richardson Community Hospice and I serve patients and their families in all stages of the end of life journey including after the patient passes as part of our bereavement support program. I'm also honored to provide community education and support programs such as this one, and I'm really glad to be able to support families during this especially challenging time. I live with my husband and our cat Bellagio, which yes, is a casino in Las Vegas, but it also means beautiful ease in Italian. I love that concept and I continue to work to try to embody that more and more. And I hope this presentation helps you to do the same during this especially challenging time. My family will probably play it safe this year and try some creative ways of connecting during the Christmas season. Um, and that's particularly due to that we have many family members that are especially vulnerable to the virus. So my glimmer of hope is to find creative ways to connect with all my family members in different innovative, maybe technology ways, or even some old school ways, like um, sending Christmas cards, which I usually don't do, but I am doing this year. So with that, let's get rolling. And this is, again, one of our first presentations with this platform. So if you can extend us a little grace in um, moving through this presentation, we do appreciate it. 
Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, and again, before we get started, um, just want to uh, share with um, all of you a little bit more about Sharon um, S. Richardson Community um, Hospice, for those of you that might not be too familiar with us. Um, again, we are caring for patients um, and family um, at end of life and ensuring that our patients um, get the physical, emotional, and spiritual help that they need and desire. Um, in addition, our bereavement um, services are available to families um, for up to 13 months after their loved one has passed. And for many families, this is such a benefit to help them get through all those special holidays and anniversaries. Um, our patients are served at home, whatever home might be. Um, it could be a typical home, apartment, a condo, even a senior community, um, such as an assisted living or even a nursing home. We also have an inpatient unit at our center in Sheboygan Falls, and this allows for our um, nurses to provide 24-7 care for patients that have symptoms that are really difficult to manage in the home setting, and it also gives family caregivers an opportunity to get a break, and we provide respite for up to five days. Um, our service area consists of Manitowoc, Calumet, and Sheboygan counties, as well as parts of Ozaki and Washington counties. Again, um, we are honored that you are here with us today, and um, we thank you um, for all that you're doing to make the most of this very unusual holiday season. Um, as Elizabeth mentioned, um, Hopefully we will not have any technical issues, um, but if so, we've got Brian to help us out. Um, wanna also let you know, um, it would be helpful if you have a piece of paper and a pen or pencil, um, as we will be doing a reflective um, exercise and those uh, materials would be helpful. Um, also wanna share that at the end of the presentation, there'll be time for a short survey and we really do appreciate your feedback. So now we would like to do a poll to learn a little bit about you. So um, when the poll pops up, um, we would love for you to please check all of um, the different um, options that apply to you. Are you a family caregiver, a professional caregiver, an administrator or leader, a resident of a senior community, or maybe a family member um, of a loved one in a senior community. So again, check all that apply. And then please hit submit. Oh, wonderful. Okay, it looks like we've got quite a few family caregivers um, with us, as well as professional caregivers. Um, again, thank you so much for your service and thanks for all that you do um, for your loved ones and patients. All right, so before we get completely started with our presentation, we just wanted to let you all know that obviously we know this is a really hard time for a lot of people and we might be touching on some emotional topics and we're not necessarily providing clinical mental health during this presentation, but should you need any of that kind of support, please don't hesitate to reach out uh, to family, friends, a doctor, or perhaps use one of these um, helplines that we've provided. You could even give us a call and we'd be happy to help get you connected to some ongoing support. Um, so please, there's no shame in that. And we did include in the materials that we sent in the opening email, this slide, should you need to reference it later. And with that, Tracy's gonna get us started with the holidays. <laughs> Well, hello again. Um, as many of you know, the holidays are a long season of celebrations. I remember when I worked in assisted living, holidays would actually begin with, or excuse me, the holidays would actually start with Halloween. 
Um, it was a, a wonderful time that families, um, scout groups um, came to um, the assisted living communities and were able to go trick or treating. And the residents just loved being in, able to interact with different generations of folks. And from there, of course, we have Thanksgiving, um, Hanukkah, um, Christmas, New Year's, um, Valentine's Day, and in between, many of us have birthdays and special anniversaries um, that we're celebrating as well. And the holidays are really supposed to be a time of joy and celebration, but for many that are experiencing loss, it can be a very emotional and, and stressful time. And um, just the other day, I had a friend um, share with me that she felt that this year was just filled with disease and disappointment. And um, certainly because of the pandemic, many of us are facing just a lot of new challenges um, health-wise, maybe challenges with jobs, um, challenges with education, if you've got kids or grandkids that are trying to learn virtually. Um, and again, um, I don't know about you, but for me, I feel like I'm, I'm trying to keep things safe and, and read all the latest and greatest information. But the minute I feel like I'm up to date with safety recommendations, then they change too. So um, it has been a very unique holiday season thus far. And as I reflect on um, the past year, I remember that the coronavirus outbreak actually happened right around uh, Easter time um, and spring break time. And if you can think back to then, um, I know for me, um, I had a son in Mexico at spring break and I spent um, quite a bit of money getting him a new flight home earlier. And for me, it was the first time in my entire life that I didn't spend Easter with my mom. And instead, my kids asked for burrito bowls, and that's what we had for um, Easter. Um, when it came to Thanksgiving, we were hopeful that we could all meet. That didn't happen. Um, and our 35-year um, tradition of going to Door County was was put on hold. Um, my kids did ask for homemade pizzas. Um, in that case, I put my foot down. Um, and I did make a traditional turkey dinner with my favorite cranberry out of a can. Um, and now as we're really looking towards the Christmas season, um, I think I've come to grips with the fact that it'll probably just be my immediate family again. Um, I think it's fair to say that we all are struggling. Um, nothing has been normal about this past year. And so we definitely want to explore a few ways um, that we can hopefully all get through this holiday season together. And now we'd like to just do one more poll. Um, and we are interested in knowing what you hope to get out of this presentation. Okay, so now with this poll, like the last one, um, please check all of the different um, scenarios that apply to you. And then once you're finished, please hit submit. Oh boy, it's pretty even. Um, we're all looking for ways to cope with a different kind of holiday, different ways to celebrate, and um, obviously how to get through those, the holidays and support other family members. So thank you for sharing that. Okay, so moving on to some of the meat of the presentation, we're gonna get going with grief. So grief can be something that's underneath all of this um, that maybe we recognize or maybe we don't. Um, basically, grief is something that we're experts in as far as working in hospice. And during this COVID-19, we're grieving both individually and collectively. We have a loss of everyday normalcy. We have a loss of connection with others. 
we have a loss maybe of our usual holiday traditions and even possibly the loss of loved ones um, to the pandemic. Everyone is experiencing this pandemic in such a different way. And there are many factors that affect how people experience grief differently. Some of these factors are things like age, maturity level, personality type, um, physical and mental health, coping styles, cultural background or spiritual or religious background, uh, family background, and obviously other stressors that people could be experiencing as well as their own life experiences. So this is truly a complex phenomena and age is certainly a factor as well as far as where the person is at in the lifespan development and what's going on in their lives. So kids are experiencing this differently as far as um, the change in their usual school routine, maybe the change in being able to do recreational things or partaking in sports teams, um, perhaps not being able to gather socially as they would in the past. Um, teenagers might be missing out on milestone dances or graduations. Um, adults figuring out how to communicate with their coworkers in a different way or with their loved ones in a different way. And many of our elders are certainly missing their visits from their loved ones. Um, perhaps I know I've spoken with a lot of elders who miss attending their church services. They try to connect with the technology or watch some on TV or Facebook, um, but they just really miss that ritual that they were able to do in the past, as well as maybe um, things in retirement that they were looking forward to that they haven't been able to do, or um, just this, this sense of loss of normalcy. So we're all experiencing this collective grief. We know now, I think that there's over 275,000 people that have lost their lives due to the pandemic. And this is a very heavy time for a lot of people. Author and bereavement specialist um, Earl Grohlman says that each relationship or situation grieved is as unique as a snowflake or a fingerprint. Same for how we're experiencing this pandemic. We're certainly in this together and we're all experiencing it in very different ways. So I wanna talk about differing degrees of grief, grit and grace, and you'll see this as a common thread throughout this presentation. Um, we wanna stress that obviously um, grief is something that's usually associated with death, but it can also be a reaction to any loss. And it can be experienced in many different degrees, like a big G, which we're gonna look at, too much grief, middle G, just right, little G, too little grief, or maybe it's just not a situation that really strikes that person very deeply. So for example, perhaps a favorite neighbor would move away or a friend might relocate for a job. And this could be a middle G for you. Uh, just right, you're handling it, you know, not that big of a deal. Or it's a little G, mm, doesn't, doesn't mean much to you, but perhaps it's a big G. Maybe you've lived next to this neighbor for like 30 years and, they're one of your long-term companions, and so their absence is actually a big G. So that's an example of how each situation is just very unique and relative. Um, and so we wanna keep that in mind, obviously, as people are going through grief. And this can mean for what's happening with the holidays as well right now. So for some people, we gotta change up our holiday traditions, no big deal. Maybe it's kind of fun, a little bit different. And that might be a little G, or maybe um, this could possibly be the last holiday with dad, mom, or grandma, and grandpa. And so this becomes a big G, thinking that you're getting robbed of this precious time with your loved one. So basically honoring this and the fact that every family has members with different levels of vulnerability and ability to gather is the beginning of cultivating these coping skills of grit and grace that we're gonna be talking about today. 
And we're going to be exploring other degrees of grit and grace, our Gs that we're going to be looking at. And so what does this picture of a little girl and eating some porridge, no, eating some soup and a planet have to do with anything? Well, to create some grace and grit, we want to strive for something that's called dynamic equilibrium. This means finding a flexible balance or, you know, kind of sweet spot. We don't want to strive for a perfect balance because striving for perfect balance actually becomes a stressor in itself. So what I want you to think about is something that's called the Goldilocks zone. And I'm sure that when I say the Goldilocks, you're thinking of the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, which is really a tale of moderation or um, happy medium, which is what we're looking for. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. And this visual is good for understanding the Gs. There actually is a Goldilocks zone that's rooted in our universe. And this zone is the area in our solar system where Earth resides. Not too hot not too cold, but just right for life to thrive. Well, maybe not in Wisconsin in winter, but you know what I mean. So we're looking for that middle G, that just right, where we're thriving, and that's where we want to shoot for. And we're thriving and we're coping. So now Tracy is going to help us take a deeper look at our other G, grit. Thanks, Elizabeth. So grit. Grit is the firmness of mind and spirit in the face of adversity. Some say it's courage, determination, persistence. It certainly is not running a sprint. It is the running of a long marathon. Um, according to Angela Duckworth, uh, she is a pioneering psychologist and also a New York Times um, bestseller. She says that grit is the combination of loving what you do, passion, and perseverance of working really hard and being resilient at what you do for the long term. Grit is about achieving, achieving things that you care about and how much energy you're going to bring to what you do over the long haul. In fact, throughout years of research, Duckworth has found that grit is actually a stronger predictor of achievement than intelligence, talent, and personality traits. For instance, it is one thing to get into West Point, but grit will determine if you make it through basic training. So grit is experienced differently by different people. Um, and grit can be a helper or a hindrance. And now we're going to do a little reflection activity. So please get that paper and pencil um, because we're going to write a few things down. Once you have that paper and pencil, what I'd like you to do is write grit at the top of your paper and then either fold your paper in half or write a line um, down the middle of it. And on the left side, put helpful. And on the right side, put hindrance. Are there any words that come to mind um, that might be helpful when it comes to grit? Do any of the words on the slide resonate with you? Or how about hindrance? There are certain words and maybe phrases that come to mind for you that could be a hindrance when it comes to finding your grit. Now what I'd like you to do is take about 60 seconds um, and really think about um, how grit plays a, a part of your life right now and write down the words, phrases, um, or concepts that really resonate with you. All right, begin.
Okay. So hopefully you had um, some time to put down words that resonate with you. On this slide, we've put together um, a word cloud that consists of both some helpful words and words that um, reflect maybe the hindrance side of grit. Um, looking at your paper, do you feel you need more or less grit? Or are you just right? Are you a big G and possibly facing burnout? Are you a little G and maybe um, facing some avoidance and need to gain more grit? Or like Elizabeth shared, are you in the Goldilocks zone, that sweet spot? Whatever it is, just remember that you might have to amp up your grit in order to get through really tough emotional times like the holidays. And it's okay, but at some point, you might need to give yourself a break so that you don't burn out. And again, remember that each of us is unique as a snowflake. We have different experiences, different backgrounds, and try not to be too judgmental. Thanks so much, Tracy. Okay, so let's take a look at our other G, Grace. So when we're talking about Grace here, we're talking about um, it as far as a state of being in ease and thoughtfulness. Some other ideas that might come to mind are calm, peace, reprieve, consideration, courteousness, politeness, and poise. And grief is experienced differently by each individual as well. And it plays a different role for each, uh, each one of us. Grace is often associated with the grace of God. And here we're exploring how can we extend grace to ourselves as well as others and so that we might be able to live in a more graceful way. Grace can be a helper, but sometimes grace can actually become a hindrance as well. So we're going to take a look at this. Do you have a big G? grace, little g grace, or just the right kind of middle g grace. So same thing here. If you could take your piece of paper, flip it over, and then at the top write grace, and then just draw a line down the middle, and on one side, the left side, write helpful, and on the right side, hindrance. So let's just take a little bit to look at how does grace serve us? As you can see on this slide, we have some examples of how grace can be helpful. It might help us to let go. It might allow us to create more flexibility. It might allow us to extend more grace to ourselves. Um, so take a look at that. But grace can also hinder. It may feel like a surprise. But sometimes we can extend too much grace or perhaps too little grace. So perhaps extending too much grace means we're bypassing a situation. We don't want to have hard conversations or we're um, kind of letting people get away with things that maybe they shouldn't be. And it's perhaps putting you or your loved ones in danger. So think about that. How can grace be a hinderer? So we're gonna take you know, about a minute for you to kind of reflect on this for you in your particular situation. How do you use grace to help? And how does grace maybe sometimes become a hindrance for you? Perhaps you need to extend a little bit more grace, you're too rigid. So let's take time to do that.
Okay, so hopefully you've had some time to reflect on the role of grace in your life. Let's take a little bit of um, time together now to look at those different levels of, of grace. Here we have, back here we have a word cloud with some of those different elements of grace from the different ends of the spectrum. Some middle G just right, some big G maybe too much, a uh, little g too little. So remember, we're always shooting for that dynamic equilibrium or that um, happy medium Goldilocks zone. And sometimes you might need to amp up your grace a little bit, maybe for yourself or for others to help yourself cope or for even for you to cope with others. But be careful not to extend too much grace um, and put yourself or others in danger. So I want to share a little story that is partially um, the inspiration for this presentation. So a couple months back, my goddaughter was having her sweet 16 birthday party. And I was very hesitant to go. This was in September when the numbers were just starting to become on the rise in my area here in, in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And um, so I asked my friend, were they going to have the party outside? And she said, yeah, we're going to have it outside. And so I felt like, okay, it's going to be outside. It should be okay. Keep our distance, wear masks. But then um, the night before the party, I came home and I saw that there had been an outbreak in the facility in which um, my goddaughter's uh, father was working. And so I thought to myself, okay, this is not safe. And especially I wasn't as much concerned for myself, but more concerned about perhaps passing this to one of my vulnerable family members or even to our patients or vulnerable um, people that we work with in hospice care. So I decided I was just gonna drop off the gift just dropped off the gift, said happy birthday, stayed for a very short amount of time outside. Um, and then my friend called me a couple days later and just said, she's really concerned about me that I seem to be really anxious about the virus. And so this kind of, you know, showed me that we were having such different experiences that I was very concerned about, you know, passing this along. And then she shared with me how she was so concerned about how her children were missing out on school and they weren't able to participate in the sporting events that they usually do. And she was really starting to be concerned about their mental health. And so in this moment, I had to realize and extend a little bit of grace for the impact that this was having on the younger generation and her as, as their mom, but then also how I was having such different experience and seeing this whole thing through such a different lens. So this was really truly a lesson in grace for me. And so I had to sort of soften my expectations and my, my judgments of where other people were coming from. Obviously, you know, keeping safety in mind, but also just realizing everybody's having a very, very different experience. All right, let's look at the next slide. So here we're wanting to share a tool, okay? All of this stuff can be extremely overwhelming. And so we've talked about grace, but how can we grow more grace? How can we cultivate this resource grace? So we want to share this quick technique with you, um, and this is called RAIN, the RAIN technique. And this was um, basically a technique that was first coined about 20 years ago by Michelle McDonald, um, but most recently has been popularized by an American psychologist, author, and meditation teacher, Tara Brock. So I also want to acknowledge that you can use prayer uh, to help with some of the overwhelm that we might be experiencing. And that's a really great way to cultivate grace too. Um, but what we wanna look at just this par particular technique that's used for emotional regulation. And so if you look, take a look at this, we have a few um, resources here. If you wanna learn more about this particular technique, a website as well as Tara Brock's YouTube channel. And then let's just dive into this particular technique here, RAIN. Okay, so it says, feeling overwhelmed, remember rain, four steps to stop being so hard on ourselves. So it starts with R, 
So our, this is really stepping back, recognize what's going on. It's taking that 10,000 foot eagle's eye view of the situation. And A is allowing it just to be there as it is, not fighting reality. It's, it's allowing, it's kind of accepting. Um, now is basically happening because of the billion previous nows that we can no longer change. And really a huge part of stress and overwhelm is resisting what is. So A is really allowing things to be what they are. It's getting yourself out of that resistance. And then I is investigate with kindness. This is really um, approaching your emotional reaction to the situation, how you would approach, maybe you're walking in the forest and you see a deer in the woods. And so you kind of want to try to get a good glimpse of it. You're going to approach slowly, probably kind of tenderly, probably not having a lot of judge judgment, more a curiosity. So that's how you want to approach your emotional landscape and what you're feeling and what's going on in this situation. And then N is natural awareness. And this is really about allowing yourself to acknowledge your emotional experience and remembering that you are not this emotion. You are not the stress. You are not this overwhelm. You are not this anger. You are not this disappointment. You're so much more than that. So just really cultivating this healthy sense of detachment. So when you're finding yourself in the thick of it, you know, think about rain. Allow yourself to feel your emotions, um, to witness it, but don't become it. If you can cultivate this grace for yourself, you can also start to extend that to others. And perhaps it's the other way around for you. A lot of people will say they they have an easier time being more um, understanding of other people's situations or circumstances or responses than their own. So cultivate a little bit more of that grace um, and so that we just don't have to have this situation define us. That grit's gonna help us um, deal with life challenges and grace is gonna help us develop that kindness for ourselves and ourselves and others, even when it's hard. Hi, Tracy. And so Tracy's got some amazing stories um, and examples for us coming up. And so she will share that with us now. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, okay, we have reached our glimmer. Uh, and in the video that you are seeing now, um, actually, I'm going to take myself off the screen so that you can see this video better. Um, this video is of a devoted dad who can be found performing a one-man dance party every Tuesday in the parking lot at Cook Children's Medical Center in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, Chuck Gielding is the dad, and he says his 14-year-old son, Aiden, who was diagnosed with leukemia earlier this year, um, both of them are just inseparable. So when Chuck learned that he couldn't join Aiden during his weekly chemotherapy treatments due to the coronavirus visitor restrictions, he found a creative way to connect with his son. Uh, when Chuck isn't dancing, uh, he works remotely on his laptop from a lawn chair outside of the hospital during his son's treatments. Okay, so again, um, we've talked about grit, we've talked about grace, and now we are definitely at our glimmer. Um, glimmer is our hope, and hope is a feeling of trust and an attitude of optimism. And hope has carried us through hard times in the past, and it certainly can help us now. Um, in addition to that story, here is yet another story um, that I was able to pick up on during the pandemic. In this slide, um, you'll actually see uh, pictures of Mary and Steve Daniel. Uh, they're from Jacksonville, Florida. Um, Steve has early onset Alzheimer's disease and resides in a memory care center. And um, Mary, 
um, was very disappointed because she had gone 100 days without seeing her husband. She went from seeing him every day and helping him get ready for bed every night to the manager saying, you know, I'm sorry, Mary, but you're not going to be able to come back tomorrow um, because of visitor restrictions. So Mary did try to see her husband through a video, or excuse me, a window, um, but that just didn't work. Um, Steve got a little agitated. He didn't understand why his wife couldn't see him in person. Um, and so it was time for Mary to get creative. And she reached out to the staff and asked if she could become a volunteer or asked if they had any positions available. And sure enough, a couple days later, she got the call and Mary became a dishwasher also that she could see her husband of 24 years and um, she shared that when they were able to reunite Steve actually started crying because he recognized his wife and Mary knows firsthand um, the hardships that this pandemic has has caused many family caregivers. So she has actually started a Facebook group to raise more awareness. Um, so I would encourage you to reach out to her on Facebook. And, um, you know, if, if nothing else, um, you might be able to um, get more support through her um, or get more information on ways um, that you can be uh, more engaged as a family caregiver. Now, the next slide, um, we, we've all heard about um, many stores um, not being able uh, to provide everything that we want, um, getting low on essentials like toilet paper and staple ingredients like flour and sugar. Um, but in this case, a 93-year-old uh, Pittsburgh resident, Olive Verwenzi, was in need of beer. And so she put a sign up for her granddaughter, Anna, to see. Anna posted it to social media and it went absolutely viral. And in fact, uh, Molson Coors took note and you can probably see on the second picture off to the right, they actually delivered um, 15 cases of beer to her. Um, and um, when, when Olive was interviewed, she said that Drinking her one can of beer at night has been her favorite ritual while she's been in self-quarantine. And she went on to say that beer is filled with vitamins and good for you just as long as you don't overdo it. Um, and here, all of us at Sharon Richardson Hospice do not want to promote drinking or Coors Light, um, but we are simply trying to um, show some humor, which is yet another way of fostering hope and showing glimmer um, in a difficult time. And now um, you can see up on the screen, we'd like to share a few ideas with you in ways that you can maybe reach out and connect with your loved one this holiday season. Um, We've actually set up a couple of different columns here. The first column really talks about our gifts. So one of the things I would like to encourage you and maybe family members um, to do is set up a pen pal. Um, so it's an older tradition, but it's a great tradition in which your loved one might be able to connect with um, a younger individual or just somebody else in the community. Um, I know that a lot of senior centers and churches and schools um, are, are working on ways to connect the different generations through pen pals. Um, I also know that um, doing weekly deliveries is, is such a, a nice welcome gift for many people, um, whether it's flowers or food or themed baskets. There's so many ways that we can show our loved ones that we care. And of course, um, then there are um, things that we can do that really focus on um, technology. And um, with regards to technology, I, I think um, I think back to eight months ago, um, I didn't even know what Zoom was. And now Zoom is the way that I can reach out um, best with my 77-year-old um, mother who um, is trying to play it safe as well. 
And um, Elizabeth, if you can just um, put that other column up, that would be great. Um, again, whether you have an iPhone, um, laptop, um, smartphones, there's lots of ways that you can connect with family. I know for me, FaceTime has really been a helpful way to connect with family. Um, but if you don't have an iPhone, um, another um, uh, cool thing that you can do is using um, Amazon Echo Show to do the video chat or a lot of um, the new virtual picture frames, um, like sky, the Skylight frame, um, the Aura Mason frame, and even Google Nest is a great way that you can set up pictures and videos for your loved ones to see. And um, many of these actually use Wi-Fi, so you can change the video as well as the pictures remotely. So every day or every week, um, your loved one can be seen new pictures. Again, if your loved one is not a fan of technology, I would really recommend that you keep it simple. You laminate directions, and if that doesn't work, just reach out the old-fashioned way and give a call. And, you know, on the phone, you can watch holiday shows together. You can do caroling together. Um, and in fact, um, on the previous gift list, we had down memory jars. And what that is, is it's a neat way that you can write down special memories, put them all in a jar. And while you're on the phone, you can have your loved one pick that pick out a piece of paper out of the jar, um, you know, say what that memory is and be able to reminisce, reminisce together. So again, lots of um, creative ways um, that you can still reach out and be a part of your loved one's life. Thank you for all of those great ideas, Tracy. <laughs> All right, so next we're gonna take a look at a video together. Um, this video is called A Message of Hope, and it is uh, created for a project called Your World Within, and this is by filmmaker and storyteller Eddie Pinheiro. Um, so let's take a look at this together, and as we're watching it, maybe try to tap into the message of hope that you hear in this video. Maybe you want to jot down a few things that they share that really truly are uh, glimmers of hope that we can um, glean in this uh, very challenging time that we're experiencing. And maybe you have some other ideas too. But so this is our, our hope and let, let's focus on that. It's interesting that the things we cherish most are the same things we want right now. They become so intertwined in the status quo that ultimately it becomes impossible to tell them apart from our day to day. That is impossible until things change. Because as it turns out, that thing we call life it has a say. They're saying you never really know what you have until it's gone. Sometimes it takes the most abrasive of reminders, the harshest of times, to help us recapture that perspective, to lift us up and show us what we had previously failed to see. And while our darkest moments test our strength, they push our boundaries, even transform our reality, they can also be the bridge that leads us exactly where we need to be. They remind us sometimes it's not about how we spend our time, but who we spend it with. That quiet brings clarity and the world can spin so fast that we forget to think about our place within it. It reminds us how humanity is bigger than the sum of its parts. And it takes just as much energy to build up as it does to tear down. It reminds us that no matter where we live, what we speak, or who we pray to, 
we're not so different after all. It reminds us that there is so much more good in this world than evil, so much more love than hate, and so much promise for tomorrow. Someday we'll look back on this moment with the lessons we've learned, the hardships we've faced, and we will be reminded of the miracle that is the human spirit, unwavering in its resolve, unbreakable at its foundation, stronger than we could ever comprehend. See, sometimes it's hard to look around and find a reason to be optimistic, to understand or comprehend why. But what we'll find is that if we look hard enough, immersed in the uncertainty, the disruption, and in some cases, the tragedy, there's something to be gained. A tiny candle flickering in the night that will eventually grow to light our way. Because that road to tomorrow is paved with hope. There are pages unwritten, stories untold, and a new chapter to begin. Thank you um, for taking the time to watch that video with us. And um, I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. And really the big takeaway here is I love that piece about a tiny candle of hope flickers now and it will grow to light our way forward, that glimmer of hope. So um, we hope we've inspired some hope today and hopefully, um, helped you to cultivate a little bit more grit and a little bit more grace and in the meantime if you're still struggling to make some decisions about gathering this holiday season uh, uw extension the wisconsin department of health services and the cdc have all created a decision making tool um, so you do have the um, slides and you'll be able to access these if you would like but um, if you think about it later and you don't want to come back to the slide just google holiday decision making and I bet you'll get a bunch of different options to pop up and it's really neat because they really help you to factor in all of the different elements um, that are involved in making decisions about the holidays and ultimately the decision of whether or not or how to gather and celebrate this year is very very personal um, so please don't hesitate to check this out if you need to or share it with your family Elizabeth and I um, would truly like to thank you for spending time with us here today um, we greatly appreciate your feedback in completing a short evaluation that will pop up on your screen uh, before you leave. And please remember during these ever-changing times, a little bit of grace and grit go a long way. Generations before us have confronted and prevailed in really trying times. And if we come together, we can do the same. You are not alone. And we can do this one day at a time, one step at a time, or one breath at a time if we need to. In closing, I would like to share the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. We wish everyone all the grit, grace, and glimmer that you need this holiday season. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy. Amen. Take care, everybody.